Hello everyone. Uh, just wanted to give a quick update. Um, I know it's been a while since I made a video. Uh, just been going through some rough times. Uh, new stuff has come up. So just kind of want to give you a rundown of what's going on and why I've been gone. So I've talked about in the past about um, liver disease can be caused by many, many things, um, which is true. Um, so anyway, I'm going too far ahead of myself here. Um, basically, I've had trouble like swallowing, like food feeling like it gets stuck and they've gone in there and, and they've done all the testing and the, and the, uh, it's called a mammometry. I probably said that wrong. Anyway, they make sure your esophagus working and all that stuff. That was about a year ago and they put Botox in it so I could swallow better. Um, kind of sucks when you can't eat, the food gets stuck. Anyway, so uh, about last, I don't know. Well, anyway, um, what had happened was I got to the point where I couldn't swallow anything, even water. Um, I would take a drink of water and it would come right back up. It would not go down into my stomach. And I was in excruciating pain. Uh, unfortunately, and I don't know if any of you with these kind of specialty sicknesses and stuff and diseases, um, I went to five ERs before I got somebody to take me seriously. Uh, they kept on doing CT scans and going, oh, we don't see anything, and so on and so forth. Anyway, um, it was kind of a nightmare. I had lost 25 pounds in a matter of four days. I was completely yellow again. Um, my whole skin changed. Um, I'm extremely skinny now. Again, uh, I was I was like 210 or so, 215. Now, now I'm in the uh, 180s. Um, so I'm gaining a little bit of that back now. But anyway, so in the process, um, I had uh, um, finally gotten my way to St. Louis University. Uh, it's quite, it's, it's a bit of a drive from where I'm at. And uh, so they got me in. Um, I had to go into the ER because I wasn't getting taken care of where I was at in locally. So um, they got me in. Um, and uh, later on that day, they had me doing an EGD, uh, which is a scope. And what they did was they, they found the esophagus. Um, what I have is dysphagia. Dysphagia is where the esophagus um, basically will not relax. It like ties itself into knots and squeezes and doesn't let go. Um, also, um, also, I have uh, echolasia, which is a the bottom of the stomach there's like a, they call it a, a sphincter muscle a uh, funny name right it sits at the bottom of the esophagus um it's like a doorway for the food to go from the esophagus into the stomach mine wasn't opening properly and it's building up excess gas um and i also have some disorder where i make this unique white foaming acid which is just wonderful um, but anyway, it kind of shoots out, um, kind of like uh, Old Faithful, I guess, from what I'm told. Uh, so anyway, um, so through this process, uh, they did all the testing and they, and they were able to get me to swallow finally. It took a few days for me to be able to eat because they put six rounds of Botox in my esophagus. They stretched it. Uh, they did a biopsy and a bunch of other stuff. Um, so anyway, long story short, at the end of it, they have determined that it's a neurological thing. Um, I'm not going to say what it is just yet because I haven't gotten the final. I have to go back and meet with them. Um, you know, of course, doctors, they don't want to tell you that stuff over the phone. But I mean, judging by the conversation I had with the doctors before we left, it was only two things. Um, even a tumor, which we know it wasn't uh, because there was no growth. They just have to do that as part of the testing to, to air, narrow it out. Um, and uh, so anyway, so I will make an announcement probably another week or so about what that is. But it looks like this is also what caused my um, cirrhosis uh, initially. Like I said, I only drank for a year and a half, so I didn't drink that much. And, you know, it never bothered me being, you know, called alcoholic cirrhosis because I did drink for a good year and a half to two years. And I drank more than I should have. Um, but you know, every doctor and everybody else was like, that's not enough. Um, I was told, uh, by one of my, my liver doctors that, uh, 
I had, my liver had been failing for a long time and, you know, finally it just took a dive, um, which always seemed funny to me because I was so bad. I mean, I was, they gave me 90 days to live. I had a chest tube in, I kept filling up on fluid in my lungs. I kept having bleeding varices and all of a sudden it just stopped. It's like, it didn't go away completely. Obviously I got a bad liver. I got a cirrhotic liver and I had my flare ups, but you usually don't, when you get that bad and you know, you normally don't come back like that. So this explains that too. So basically what this does, it attacks, um, my uh the flesh and this one that i the version i have um again not officially official yet but <laughs> it will be um the version that i have um attacks the inner organs so this attacked the esophagus um and then i got the liver I, it also makes the lungs like um start to uh crystallize a bit um and it affects pretty much everything makes your thin your skin thicker and stuff uh so um anyway wish me luck on that i got more testing uh looks like um i'm gonna have a little bit of a road um the uh uh dysphagia the problem with that is the esophagus it's a neurological issue so what's happening is like i'll fall asleep i can't lay down anymore i have to be at an angle like i am now um, otherwise the little flap in the back of my throat that goes between, and I don't know the name of it, sorry, that goes between the, um, your windpipe your, or your, you know, your esophagus and your, uh, windpipe there. Um, it's supposed to, when you're breathing, it's supposed to close off the esophagus and vice versa. Well, I've waken up gasping for air a few times because that shut while I was sleeping. Scariest thing ever. When you wake up and you stop breathing and you know it. I mean, I always re I always started breathing immediately right afterwards. So it wasn't like, but let me tell you, that's a panic attack. Um, the first time that happened, it was, uh, kind of, kind of, kind of freaky. So, um, but so I have to learn that. Plus I have to watch, um, uh, food can come back up and like while I'm sleeping or even in general, and it can go down, uh, into my lungs um, it's called, uh, aspiration and that can cause pneumonia. Uh, last night I spiked a temperature of 106, 101.6, I'm sorry. And all day I've been a little over hundred. So I just went in and had an x-ray done and blood draws and urine tests and all that stuff. So I'm waiting on the answers for that. So hopefully I didn't catch something from the hospital because that's always a possibility. I mean, it's a hospital or hopefully I didn't breathe down some food and, you know, pneumonia starting. So wish me luck on that. Um, so, but I'll keep everyone posted once I, you know, get the, the, the final word, I will do a video on it. Um, and I apologize for not saying it. I mean, I guess you could Google and try to figure it out, but you know, we're going to, uh, keep that one a secret just for now. So, all right. Anyway, I hope everyone's doing well. Again, I apologize for, uh, not making any videos recently, just, a lot going on um you know so and this this will end a little bit more difficulty to it but i'm going to work on staying positive so all right everyone stay positive stay blessed um look after each other so all right